not only in like um, my spinal cord, it's now like in my hip area, it's in my liver and my lung. Um, it's, it's, I'm sorry if it's a silly question. So, are you dealing with a lot of pain? Yeah. Now. I mean, I just woke up here like Captain Hook. Didn't you see? <laughs> yeah, so there's a lot of pain. I mean, every day is different. Um, so the form of treatment um, is different in the sense that um, in in this in, in this regard, like they're doing a lot of um, trying to, I guess, improve my quality of life and in reducing pain. So my treatment would be more of um, strengthening the bones in my body, which are easily fractured. Mm -hmm. So I do have currently um, fractured bones due to cancer. Sure. Yeah. And the treatment for cancer itself? Yeah. Are you, are you going through that? Um, on and off, to be honest. Yeah, on and off, to be honest. Um, so I actually do have a scan um, that's been scheduled. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's going to be a scan of obviously it's a CTR, it's a CT scan, and that's going to see whether the medication that I have been on, the treatment that I have been on, has been working. Mm -hmm. um, and if not, I guess my oncologist will then take a different uh, course of action in terms of giving me the right medications. Mm -hmm. But so um, what I'm expecting is I go for my scan um, on the fifth, and then I have a consultation with her, and then um, treatment will resume. The decision to take or not take treatment for cancer patients is a big one. Is yeah, not? yeah. If um, it's terminal, was it was it easy for you? Um, <laughs> no. I mean, mm -hmm. I think for a very long time I was just like, okay, I'm, I'm tired. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm tired. Let it let it do what it needs to do, mm -hmm. um, and that's fine. And um, I don't want to do that to my kids. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that to my kids, and I think. It probably will sound strange, but I think I'm blessed enough or fortunate enough to be in a position where I'm in my planning stages. You know, mm -hmm. I'm having conversations with my loved ones and mm -hmm. my lawyer and my therapist and my, my siblings about, so what happens in the days leading to my passing? What happens after I pass away? Um, you know, with the sibling therapy, um, it's, a, it's a piece of paper I've actually never seen or even thought of. So it's very much like a will, but it's called a personal care plan. And that, for instance, um, asks questions like, what happens to the book? What happens to the kids? What message is going to relate to media or people outside of the family? You know, what happens to memorabilia or like heirlooms and things like that. So that's where I am right now. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm a planning phase. I imagine being in a planning phase, uh, there are days when you feel quite empowered mm -hmm. to be in your planning phase mm -hmm. and to, to kind of own this thing. Yeah, and to be involved in the decisions that are going to affect me and especially my kids. And then there are days when it must, it's not that easy. No. Sure yeah. That you are having a planning phase. Sure, sure. It's not, um, but I try. I mean, I think I'm very, um, I'm very honest with how it is that I'm feeling. Um, if today's not a good day, it's just not a good day, um, and that's fine. Um, there's therapy for that. Um, I have reinforcements, um, but I know that you know tomorrow is, a, is another day um, to kind of, you know, whatever it is that I need to do. But I, I've learned to really just um, be okay with. my eventuality if that makes sense okay i'm learning to um be okay with living despite an expected death you know so i'm i'm also just continuously like i'm always you know like evaluating like you know various facets of my life like my relationships um my priorities my goals and things like that um and i think that's empowering for me too because Again, I mean, I, I think I'm, I've been put in a place where I'm able to actually have a say in, you know, in the things that I want to happen, especially with my children being a same parent and a parent that's the only parent that literally looks after, you know, um, all my children. And, and also, I would never want to burden my, my siblings and my, and my friends 
with um, you know having to worry about whether they've honored me in a certain way or you know that kind of thing. So, what life questions are you asking yourself? Um, I think I'm past why me. I think I'm past why me. Um, it was just like two days. Uh, when is it that I went to the mall and the la- I spoke to that lady two days ago? Yes. So two days ago, the night before, I like I didn't sleep. I was crying the whole night. Okay, I'm in pain constantly, so it's like it's also just so exhausting, and it's just uh, I'm in pain. I'm having quite a bad day, and um, I get to the mall, and for some reason, I decide to go to a different mall. Anyway, um, to cut a long story short. Um, is a lady that approaches me and now I'm like probably the only person that still wears a mask in 2023 but she sees me through my mask I'm still I'm scared of COVID mm-hmm. anyway um so uh she sees me through my mask and she's like oh Zo, it's you blah 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 and she's like um I'm not, I'm not into social media you can see with my age and go gaily I'm old you know that kind of thing but my brother's going through the exact same thing you're going through and I want you to know that you're the reason I have strength for my brother and the reason why I still have hope. And I was like, I was just asking God these questions the other day, like why, I, I don't even know what you're doing with me anymore. Like, what are we doing? Like, what is what is this for? Because I am battling to understand because, you know, for me, it's, it's the kids, you know, it's my kids. Do you sometimes feel like God or whoever you speak to? Um response in other words do. do you sometimes get the answers and, and, and as in understand the answers and then sometimes ah, here. yeah i do there's that and um but i'm also living i'm still alive mm-hmm. <laughs> i'm still alive mm-hmm. um i hello guys welcome to my channel and i'm sadly here to announce to you that zoleka mandela a south african writer activist and Nelson Mandela's granddaughter has sadly passed away. According to the Mandela family, Zoleka passed away on Monday evening 25th of September. In a statement, the Mandela family said Zoleka was admitted at a hospital on 18th September for ongoing treatment for metastatic cancer to the hip, liver, lung, pelvis, brain, and spinal cord. Zoleka was given a cancer diagnosis 11 years ago and ever since then her most recent CT scan revealed that her lung had fibrosis. She has been in and out of the hospital. She had written books about her addictions, her daughter's death and her own battles with breast cancer. Here at Nice Novia we send our condolences to her family, friends and fans. May her soul rest in peace.